All right, so what frames the daily setups? Obviously, we have to concern ourselves with higher time frame institutional order flow, and that's going to be arrived at looking at monthly, weekly, and daily PD arrays in the last 20, 40, and 60 trading days. Uh, you don't need to see anything in terms of a weekly or a monthly primarily because uh, you'll generally see something on the daily that will line up for a discount or a premium PD array. Now, IPTA will be seeking new levels in price for liquidity. That's the role of the interbank price delivery algorithm. It seeks to move price to an area of new liquidity. The weekly chart or current candles direction is what we're primarily working within. So what we're doing is, is we're blending our expectation of what IPTA may be seeking in terms of new liquidity above or below us in terms of market price. And we're forecasting the weekly candle direction that we're presently trading in. So in other words, if we're getting ready to go into a new week, we're going to be forecasting what IPTA will be reaching for, higher or lower prices in relative terms to the PD arrays and in the IPTA data ranges. In other words, how far back are we looking for the most obvious, logical, premium or discount array and what's the direction that's most likely favoring higher or lower prices and then we incorporate that idea in forecasting the, the present or next weekly candle and we look for that expansion higher or lower in relative terms to what we expect in terms of the at the data range and institutional order flow the day of the week is paramount in understanding about day trading because there's certain days that have high probability and there's other days that can be a little bit of a hat trick in other words you may expect something to happen this particular day but it may do something entirely different. And then there's other days that are predisposed to really just be a quiet day. And the most important is time of day. Time of day for day trading is absolutely paramount. There are specific times of the day that IPTA will move price and gyrate price around, and then the market makers will facilitate trade at those particular times. So you have to be flexible with time and demand specifics in price. That means we're demanding specific things that occur in a window of time. So the flexibility resides in time, not price. Price must hit our level, must go to our level, and we look for price to reach for that contrary and PD array for our profit. We do not wait for price to get exactly to that level because we're always going to look to exit early, but we're always looking for these exits and entries to overlap with specific times of the day. And what we're primarily focusing on are volatility expansions or large daily ranges. Primarily, we're going to be looking for day trades at the London session open, and that is basically the ICT kill zone for London. And we're going to be talking in terms of New York time. So when I refer to a time here, it's going to be relative to what time it is in New York. So typically, London, the hot spot for the higher low to form of the day is usually between 2 o'clock in the morning and 4 o'clock in the morning New York time. Now, it can deviate and, and transition a little bit earlier, a little bit later relative to the economic calendar and or daylight savings time. It has a little bit of an overlap where there may be some transition time before the market observes any movement from a daylight savings time or not in daylight savings time. Uh, the way I um, overcome that is I look at my London open kill zone beginning at 1 a.m. AM New York time and ending at 5 a.m. New York time. The next time window we look at is the New York session open. Now, this is primarily the easiest one to work with. Uh, you know, London can be a little bit of a beast, so you have to know a little bit more understanding about IPTA, how the daily ranges form within the weekly range, and then the weekly range forms within a monthly range. So all of these fractal ideas, they have to be utilized in modular fashion, and over a period of time, you'll get a better understanding about how the sessions unfold, but New York primarily is is really, really good. Now, the only time that you would avoid New York is if the London session puts in 80% of the average daily range. And there's going to be very few times that it does that. But generally, unless the daily range is almost entirely completed in the last five days, average daily range is what I'm referring to. Uh, that measurement, if it's met or exceeded in London, that is when you want to move to the sidelines and don't even consider trading New York because it's probably either going to bounce around, go sideways, or it may catch you in a reversal that you weren't expecting. And it's just better just to just sit on the sidelines and don't worry about it. Wait for another trading day. London close. Uh, London close is the time of day where we look to really bank our positions. And there are times when if the market is in a reversal uh, intraday, but it goes down into a logical level of support or trades up into a logical level of resistance, uh, that may be the very moment in time that a reversal uh, occurs. London close is not always just simply close uh, existing trades and move to the sidelines. Many times London close can be incorporated as a entry point for longer term one shot one kill or swing or position trades. 
All right, the New York close is basically just a time window. What we're looking for is uh, the 2 o'clock hour. Now, what we're looking at is the 2 o'clock hour and specifically the 3 o'clock, uh, which is the close of the bond market. That, to me, is the close of the New York session. So what we look for is in days to have FOMC, interest rate stuff that comes out at 2 o'clock hour in New York time. Uh, that usually will run till around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, New York time. And then when the bond market closes at 3 p.m., that's it. Whatever's happened by then, that's the daily range. And there's nothing else to expect. Asian session open. Uh, this is primarily 8 p.m. in New York. We're looking for very small little setups that takes place in uh, this time of day. But many times uh, during the Aussie overlap into Asia, uh, you can actually get the daily lower high formed uh, in the Asian session open for like the yen pairs, uh, Aussie and uh, Kiwi. Those types of uh, pairs can generally surprise a trader by forming a uh, special or important, if you will, higher low at that time of day. When you would normally expect it in the London session, uh, those pairs generally can have a surprise and form their particular daily low and respective low at that session time. And London lunch. This is generally between 5 a.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, that time window is when the market goes pretty much quiet uh, and it prepares for the next leg, either in the direction that London creates or a reversal. And on days that don't promote any more follow through, it can just be a continuation rate from London and goes right on through the New York session in consolidation. Okay, day of week. I'm going to give you some characteristic specifics about uh, each day. And Sunday, generally we opt out because the daily range is simply too too small. It's only a couple hours. Okay, Monday. Generally, this can create a small range typically. Um, if it's a really large range and it comes right out the gate you know, direction-wise and you understand where you're at in terms of the, the PD arrays, if we're trading up into a premium right from the uh, jump of the new week and Monday becomes a high range or large range day and it trades into a premium PD array, that can many times be the high of the week. That's the characteristics that we look for. So that's kind of like a tip that we can add to back uh, the one shot one kill content. If Monday is a big range day and we trade up into a premium relative to the daily, then we can really anticipate that being the high of the week. Tuesday usually is a good day to trade in terms of specifics of one shot one kill. Usually on bullish weeks, uh, Tuesday has a 70% likelihood of creating the low of the week in London, and therefore it creates a high probability uh, scenario to be a day trader on Tuesdays. And the reverse is said for when the markets are bearish, you have a 70% likelihood that Tuesday's London open will create the high of the week. So generally Tuesdays are really good days to trade for day trades. Wednesday are really ideal scenarios because what you'll see is you have Sunday if you use those candles in your platform, Monday and Tuesday, or if you don't have Sunday, you have Monday and Tuesday behind you, and it gives you some insight as we're going to share in this teaching to help frame confidence around trading Wednesday with a particular mindset going into London and New York. So generally, ideal day trading uh, is seen on Wednesday because you have some data midweek. Thursday, again, is a generally ideal scenario, but you got to be careful. Thursdays can reverse. Usually, the weekly range is, again, capped by Thursday's New York session. So be mindful that if we do get a good day trade in, in Thursday's London Open, it may fizzle out and actually reverse the week during the Thursday New York or London close scenario. Friday is typically a small range as we close a week, uh, but if there are objectives that haven't been met by Thursday in terms of the PD arrays, uh, you could see a surprise expansion on Friday running into that uh, PD array. So it's kind of like a toss up. It depends on what we've seen in the weekly range. If Thursday has met the daily PD array, whether it be a premium or discount that we've traded for in terms of a target uh, for the weekly range as a whole, if that's been met by Thursday, chances are Friday is going to be a really quiet day. Uh, if it has not been met, Friday can generally sometimes surprise us and have a big large range day. The weekly range framework. Okay, what we look for is on Sunday, we determine the new trading week's opening price. Now, this will aid us in intra week with day trade directional bias to work with. Now, I already know some of you are thinking and panicking. Oh, no, my broker doesn't use Sunday data. No problem. Just use your opening on Monday. It's not that big of a deal. It's not going to be that much of a disparity. But we're going to note this Sunday opening and we're going to note it and draw it out in time all the way through our 60 minute or one hour chart all the way up to Thursday. What we do with this is we take that opening range price from Sunday and we draw it out on our hourly chart and we draw it all the way until Thursday. Now, why is it Thursday? Well, because your profile say on Thursday, you could see a reversal unfold for the week. 
So while we do have some rules that we're going to be sharing with you here, Thursday may change that entirely. And it'll also frame a high probability reversal confirmation, if you will, if price gets back above and when it's bearish, like for instance, look at this chart here. If price were to trade back above the opening price on Sunday during Thursday's trading, we've probably turned the corner. We've had a major intra-week reversal, and that many times indicates a longer-term one-shot-one-kill bullish. So we could get in sync with that, if not on the next day in Friday, we can certainly be in sync with it the next trading week. But the Sunday opening price filter, we look for price to trade above this level generally early in the week during bearish weekly directional bias. In other words, we're expecting price to trade down away from a PD array that's a premium. Okay, we've seen price move up into a premium. It's already traded. IPTA's already fulfilled a premium level. So therefore, we're expecting expansion on the downside. And we see the opening price. And then price starts to trade up Sunday and going into Monday, trades above it. So therefore, we're seeing a little bit of a Judas swing. That's the criteria we're looking for. And then throughout the rest of the week, as long as price is lower than this Sunday opening price each day of the week, we look to sell short in all of our day trades. Caveat is until a higher time frame PD array that's contrary to how our trade is unfolding is traded to. In other words, if we're looking for bearish ideas, okay, directional wise, we're expecting the weekly candle to be closing lower than it opened on Sunday. In other words, the weekly candle closing Friday will close lower than it opened on Sunday's opening or if your data provider opens on Monday. If we're expecting that down candle on a weekly basis, as long as we are trading below the Sunday's opening price, we're looking to sell short every single day in in London and continuation in New York. But this is only true in this case, while we're looking for sell days every day of the week, while we're below the Sunday opening price, that's true only until we trade to a higher time frame discount PD array. Okay, so we're looking at a British pound USD weekly chart. So every range here represents a weekly amount of data. In other words, it's the open, high, low, and close of an entire week. I want you to focus primarily at this chart and think about power three. I want you to look at these candles and remind yourself that the weekly range candles that are large have the opening price and closing price at opposing ends of the candlestick range. Now, this is important because it's teaching you to focus and anticipate range expansion. Range expansion on a weekly chart is a gold mine. As long as you know what the most likely probable direction is on the weekly candle that we're forming right now, you can find setups. You don't have to worry about missing anything because last time I checked, there's every new week, there's a new candle forming on a weekly basis. So there's new setups to form. So now looking at this weekly chart, we're going to look at a bullish candle, okay? And what we're focusing on primarily is that the open is usually near the low of the week and the close is near the high of the week. Now let's think about this in relative terms. It's a weekly candle, so therefore the open is Sunday's opening. Or if your data is only providing Monday, not Sunday candles, it's going to be the Monday opening, okay? So what we're looking for is that little bit of movement below the opening price when we're primarily bullish, and then we're going to be looking for expansion throughout the rest of the week until Friday. Friday's close. All the way between the open and close, that's your range that you're working within. We generally don't rush a London setup on Monday, but if you're absolutely aggressive, you can be looking for setups on Monday, especially if you have a big range uh, starting right out of the gate on uh, Sunday going into Monday uh, Frankfurt. So if that happens, then th that's pretty much a, a, a sure deal that you should be paying attention to London on Monday. So you still have to be paying attention to it. So regardless of where you live in the world, around midnight in uh, New York time on Monday, uh, you need to be looking at the charts and see how big the range was for Asia on Monday's trading. So from Sunday's opening all the way into Frankfurt setup, you know what that looks like by looking at midnight and uh, Monday morning, New York time. And if it's a big range, then you primarily want to look for the weekly high or low to form on Monday because it's in a rush to get somewhere in a hurry. If you look at the daily chart, many times it's going to line up with a premium or a discount array, and then you pretty much know what they're going to probably do the rest of the week. Okay, our first and three examples here. We're looking at the daily chart of the pound, and this is illustrating a premium PD array on the daily chart in the form of a daily rejection block and an old low discount PD array. So we have two reference points framed here. Okay, and you can see all of the days for this particular week are noted and our opening price is forecasted throughout the week until Thursday. You can see that we had that daily rejection block premium PD array traded to and above the opening price on Sunday and price started trading softer right away on Monday, trading lower. Now on Tuesday, okay, we had sell off right after the transition from Monday into Tuesday. It sold off and then went in consolidation and that consolidation continued all the way into 
the London Open for Wednesday, and then price rallied again. Now, think about what's happened here on Wednesday, Tuesday and Wednesday. Price had traded down into a fair value gap. So we had gap support, and you can see that gap really being noted here. But price traded down and found support and couldn't find its way below 124.30 Tuesday and Wednesday. Finally, it rallied up, creating another consolidation. And then Thursday, it trades up intraday, creating a high that's higher than the consolidation that was formed in Wednesday. Then it was rejected, and then we sold off on non-farm payroll on Friday. The general consensus is that we were looking for sells below that opening price on Sunday because it had traded into the daily rejection block PD array in a premium basis. Okay, our second scenario or example for case study, we have a daily rejection block premium PD array and we have a bullish order block low discount PD array. The previous week prior to the week of this recording, Okay, you can see the opening price on Sunday, and right away, price shoots out the gate on Monday, trades up aggressively, trades higher, and then sells off again in London on Tuesday, and then trades down through that opening price. Now, watch what happens. On Wednesday, the mantra would be, okay, we're below the selling point of Sunday's opening price, so therefore, I should be looking to sell short because we're below Sunday's opening price. No. The reason why is because we traded down into a fair value gap relative to the daily chart, and we have that daily discount bullish order block. See how it stopped it dead in its tracks? So while we're still below the opening price, and we hit a PD array in a discount contrarian scale, in other words, we're looking at something that would be opposing our expectations on lower pricing. If we're at a discount on the daily, if it hits that, we have to look at what that PD array is. Is it premium or, or, or discount? In this case, it's discount. So therefore, it's going to offer support. We cannot be a seller in this particular setup. We anticipate what unfolding? A reversal. So we have Wednesday's profile, Wednesday reversal or low of the week form. And then we can change gears and forget the Sunday's opening price. And we're going to focus primarily on the weekly profile. And we transition from that. Now we're going to incorporate the weekly profile of Wednesday low of the week. On Wednesday, it trades down. And then on Thursday, it trades down into that fair value gap. Also, a discount PD array. And then it expands up above the opening price that's seen on Sunday. And then on Friday, it opens and trades down again into a bullish order block that was seen on Thursday's trading. And then it expands up against once more, closing in the liquidity void formed on Tuesday's trading. Okay, our last example here, we have the bullish order block low discount PD array, and we have an old high or equal highs premium PD array. Okay, and we have the opening price on this particular week's Sunday's opening and price trades right from the opening. It goes up a little bit on Monday and trades down right away into the bullish order block low discount PD array and then rallies away from that. And then we have one more attempt to go lower on Tuesday, trades down into it Tuesday and then expands up. So now Tuesday, we've traded above Sunday's opening. We are at a discount on the daily. So therefore, we have our scenario expecting the weekly range or candle to close higher than it opened on Sunday. So therefore, our mantra is every day we're looking for an open decline, low of the day, buy it in London. In New York, we're looking for a retracement into the range that was created from London's low to the high formed prior to 8.20, 8.30 a.m. In that realm, uh, we're looking for that CME opening, which is 8.20 a.m. New York time. Uh, when that occurs, generally that's going to be the setup in New York. And so usually a uh, continuation, therefore, uh, and we're going to be looking for an expansion continuing on the up move. So we have the criteria met with a discount PD array on the daily being met on Monday's trading. If we trade above Sunday's opening price on Tuesday. So therefore, Wednesday, Thursday, we're looking for openings in London to trade down, buy at a logical discount PD array in its lower time frame hourly chart. And look what happens on Friday. The criteria says that Friday can be a quiet day and the weekly range can be capped by Thursday's trading in New York. And you see that happens here. Notice also, because we did not hit the old high or equal high premium PD array, on Sunday, we opened up rallying right away and it makes a run for what? The daily PD array equal highs. Once it hit those equal highs, then on Tuesday, we see the week that we just talked about. It creates that failure swing, creating the high of the week on Tuesday. So there's that overlap of PD arrays that caused the previous examples weekly high, the form on Monday and Tuesday.